in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. Do you work out? Just a little bit. Can you show us? No, no, behind you, behind you. What is your workout? Let's start this right here. Right, move it along now. <laughs> move it along now. What do you mean? <sighs> can, can I just do something? Do not drop that on my foot. Don't do that. Hold on. Hold that next to your head. Yeah. Oh my God, you're <laughs> such a deviant. That could have been any colour. Was that racist, what I just done? Yes. Was it actually racist? Because I just picked that one up, but I could have picked up any of the coloured ones. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Nelson. You've been doing some stuff for uh, radio. That's because I've got I've got a lovely voice. That's how we roll. Face. You got Lo a face. A lovely face and a lovely voice. Oh, nice. You're in Sheffield. Behave yeah. yourself. Do you know what? I was more excited when I looked at that table that Jim White and Tony Cascarino were there ahead of you. Is that wrong? Yeah, if you're into football, it must be right. But I ain't into football. Well, so you I'm know diddly to me. You know what? They're talking football right now. I said, yo, listen, I'm out of here. I don't know football. Do you not know nothing about football? No. 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 Nothing. You, listen, you kick me and name I roll me. it seven times. That's fake fool. Name me. Just name me five footballers. What, past or present? Go on, I'll, I'll make it easy for you, either. Des Walker. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Carlton Palmer. All right. Uh, I, can, I can name loads. David Beckham. Ryan Giggs. Paul Scholes. All right. Jamie Carragher. What, what, what? Hey. Yeah, you Nothing. Des Walker, you come out with Des Walker. Des is cool, man. He's yeah, like he in Don Gargan. When he played at Sheffield Wednesday, he didn't train with him, you know. He trained at home and then turned up for a match. Rated. And he's still in good nick. You're in good nick. That's right. We're at the media day for Joshua. Yeah. Standard now before every Joshua fight does a bit of a training session for the likes of you <laughs> and me and everyone else. These are good days for him because you know in, in training camp it's lonely, it's boring. Uh, you're in solitude, and all of a sudden you've got a load of different people here to just talk something different with. And, and I know it might not seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal when you're in training camp for 12 weeks. It's just you just need different people, and that's why. Anthony will come in and we'll be talking to everybody and he's, like, he's buzzing because he's thinking, yeah. So, but remember, when we all leave, it's just them again, you know, and it's, it's monotonous, it's like Groundhog Day. Obviously, we've got Dylan White and Lucas Brown this week. We'll come on to that in a second, but Anthony Joshua takes on Joseph Parker next week. All the belts, apart from one, yeah. on the line. Are people overlooking... Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker. Yes. Joseph Parker is unbeaten. Joseph Parker is probably the same stage of his career as Anthony Joshua. He's been successful. He's younger than Anthony Joshua. He's busy. He can punch. He's never been down. He can take a shot. Because they, we don't know much about the, 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 the general public don't know much about him, they're not giving the credit he deserves. So they're just expecting Anthony Joshua to get a knockout. Anthony Joshua's not been, been silly. He's got good sparring partners in for this. He's got his old, old four Carlos Takam in. He wants someone that's tough that's going to be pushing him because he knows Parker's that kind of fighter. I think if this, guy, this fight gets stopped, I think it'll be uh, not my Parker getting stopped. I think it'll be by the referee jumping in or his corner throwing the towel in. Parker's a tough, tough guy. He's very fast. His natural shot is a big right hand over the top in the direction of, of Anthony Joshua's head. So, so therefore, you've got to think to yourself, don't write this guy off. You know, just don't do that because if you do that, that's where, where we make mistakes and start getting giddy about the AJ Wilder fight uh, where we forget about this little pothole called Josie Parker. You were out in New York. Yeah. For the... Oh, let me tell you, this is funny. What? So we're out in New York. So some boys are walking down the street. They're obviously uh, Wilder's boys with a camera saying to everybody, hey, do you know who Anthony Joshua is? So basically, they were trying to say that Wilder is bigger than doing Anthony Joshua. Doing what Eddie Hearn was doing, basically. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So, so they're going to people saying, do you know Anthony Joshua is in, in New York, outside the box, they said, remember, Wilder's boxing the day after. And so, so some people say yes, some people are saying no. So obviously these guys don't know who I am. I'm just another black gay in New York. So they came up to the guy stood next to me and said, do you know who Anthony Joshua is? I said, well, stop. 
So they came to me, do you know Anthony Joshua? So one of them recognised me, I said, let me do you a favour. So I said, turn around. So this woman was walking up the street, and I said, excuse me, do you know who Deontay Wilder is? She said, I have no idea, honey. I said, there you go. You've got the heavyweight champion of the world, an American boxing in this building, and she don't know who he is. So you need to look on your own doorstep first before you start talking about a man that's 6,000 miles away. So these guys are going mad, going crazy. I said, at the end of the day, Anthony Joshua cannot walk down the street in England. He gets mobbed. You saw, you saw, you said the Auntie Wilder jump in his car. Don't be chased after him. One of the two boxing fans did. I, I can understand the frustration of the Auntie Wilder because he's been a pro a lot longer. He's been, and he's been successful. He's a true pro. He's a tough, tough unit. But I just think he's not got the credit he deserves, even in his own country. Now, who do you put the blame that, 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 uh, on that to? You know, because I think, I think Dante Wilde is the most colourful character in boxing today. I think he's, he's the kind of guy that, that boxing needs. Him, Tyson Fury, people like that, are loud, brash, talk it, and back, uh, talk the talk and walk, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. But unfortunately, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. So I understand his frustration. I understand his, his bitterness towards, I don't know, if there is any bitterness towards Anthony Joshua or towards Eddie Hearn. But this is, this, is, this is nobody else's fault, apart from whoever it is that's, that's got the job of promoting him. What did you take from Deontay Wilder's performance against Wicked. Luis Ortiz? He flew up in my estimations, I'm telling you, because he showed bottle, he showed cojones, he showed like he could got a chin. He showed fitness uh, and he showed instinct, because when he was hurt, you know, instinctively, he did what Joshua did. He slept, walked his way through a couple of rounds when he was hurt. When he got back again, boom, he was on it. The second he got Ortiz going, he jumped him in. You look at the pedigree, Ortiz has got much more better pedigree than Deontay Wilder. And I thought before the fight, I thought, I can see Ortiz doing it here. I, I rated uh, Wilder for taking the fight. After Ortiz failed a drug test, going in with somebody that nobody wants to fight, and he picked him, and then dismantled him the way he did. He went so uh, so high in my estimation, I'm thinking, you know what, rated. He's a true, there's two true warriors out there that I know. That's Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. I'd actually include Titan Fury, but he's not back in the mix yet. But these guys are true warriors. They're not fake, you know, and, and, and that's what boxing's all about. What's well, your gloves are off a couple of nights ago? Doing the usual... Shit stirring. No. That's what he's going to say. I no, not shit stirring. It's not shit stirring, I'm just asking questions. What did you say? Uh, the best quote from you was, I beat three drug cheats. So I can tell you now that it doesn't make you a better fighter. It's, it's true though. It don't make, people don't understand, you know, you, you can take drugs to make you stronger, make you faster, uh, make you think better, make you think you're Elvis, <laughs> make you think you can have sex all night. It doesn't make you, is that called Viagra? Oh, it doesn't make you, <laughs> it doesn't make you a better fighter, technically a better fighter. And, and, and it, it, when you beat a drug cheat, it's the best feeling in the world because you think, so even cheating, you can't beat me. And it's, it's, it's to say to others, if you're going to take gear, you know, take gear for, for, for whatever reason you're doing, but don't think it's going to make sure you beat, make you beat me. And when it happened with me, I'm thinking, yeah, I felt good. It felt sweet. You used to be on that old Angel Dust, didn't you? They used What's to that? call you Angel Dust Nelson, didn't they? <laughs> that yeah, red I, devil I, I, <laughs> No, I never touched that stuff. Angel Dust? I never took, I don't know what it is, but I don't do it. You that don't stuff. know what angel dust is? What's angel dust? Do yeah, you know? No, oh, what is it? Wait, wait, put your hand in my pocket. I'm not putting your hand in your seat, bud. Put it in my pocket. No, man. And just dab. You like that? <laughs> 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 um, Dylan White, though. I mean, interesting. If he wins on Saturday, he's ranked. Is he number one with the WBC? Yeah, I, you know, Dylan White has done it the right way. And, and, and unfortunately for him, uh, and no, unfortunately for everybody else, they can't ignore him. Uh, so he he's deserves his shot, his, his, his position, because he's fought to get that position. So, so no matter what, he's done the job. He's kept winning since he lost to, to Anthony Joshua. I think Dylan White's fight against Lucas Brown, he's got to be careful, because Lucas, Lucas might not be the most technically gifted, but he can whack. Derek Chisora spoiled with him, he said he can whack. He might, the, might not be the most technically gifted, but he can bang. So Dylan needs to box smart. He can't box him like he boxed Derek. You know, he's got to box him long. He's got to show some discipline. You know, uh, uh, hit, box, move, and not get too involved. Because if he gets involved and Lucas Brown gets one good shot off, fight's over. And we'll see that. Uh, I don't think it'll be a stoppage. Uh, I think this will be a distance fight. I think it'll be a hard fought fight as the rounds roll on as well. 
It's definitely going to be an interesting night. That's my fun. That you? Yeah, right That's not very professional, is it? Right Can there. I get it? Let me answer it. Come on, let me answer it. You won't give me it if it's your girl. Let me answer it. No, Come on, can't. let me answer it. You can't. It's your girl, innit? No, I You're ain't. so protective. No, I ain't. No, you I ain't. are. Hey, honey, how you doing? You on FaceTime? No. <laughs> That's a landline number. Who rings from a landline? Um, should Golovkin Canelo be happening? It shouldn't, uh, but it depends on how you look at it. If you believe the story, if you believe that... Do you believe the story? It can happen. It can happen. And if, it's, if it works for the, the governing bodies, who am I to say you're wrong or right? Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference. I think he'll lose again. He should have lost the first fight. Um, I, I don't think it'll make him a better fighter. So then, what the, if he wins, he's going to win the, with a cloud over him because they're saying, what have you got done for drugs? If he loses, they're going to think, well, maybe it's true. Maybe it was contaminated me. I don't think he'll win anyway. And I actually, I actually thought Canelo would win the first fight. And then, there's no way it was a draw. You know, I'm, and, and Canelo went up in my estimations in regards to his speed, his movement, his instinct, his boxing ability. I actually didn't realise he was that good. And I actually thought he'd win anyway. Uh, and he boxed brilliantly. It just wasn't enough. Golovkin had it, mm. topped him in every department. Now they'll box again. If Canelo wins, there's a cloud over. If he loses, they'll say, oh, maybe it's true what you're saying. Uh, this, this fight, it can generate up to 900 million. Do you think the fight will definitely million. happen still? I saw some quotes today from... Golovkin, obviously, because I don't believe he had said anything until the yeah. last couple of days or not, but now he's kind of coming out and calling Canelo allegedly, like I said, from the quotes I've seen Is that today. him that's saying it, or is it people saying it? Now, you got to think, I don't think he's saying it. It's his people well, I saying it. I think the quotes are sort of all for him. Even, but I don't know, listen, don't, unless I hear someone saying it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, apparently, yeah, today. But... Listen, at the end of the day, they're fighting each other. So, so if Golovkin was that concerned, I said, I ain't fighting you, you're a drug, che drug cheat. But Golovkin said, well, basically say what I said, drugs ain't going to make you a better fighter. And that's, that's, the, that's the truth. Mm. That's, that's just how it is. And, uh, and people need to get that in their head. If it's to get you through training camp, it's to get you, make you stronger, make you fitter, go for it. But it's not going to make you a better fighter. Okay. I think we're going to start soon anyway. So. Elvis is, Elvis is in the building. Look at that. Look at that. Elvis is in the building. That's Elvis. <laughs> Elvis is in the building. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We talking. Look at that. Elvis is in the building. <laughs> Looks lean. He does look lean. I reckon. Why? You just think. He's what, 17 stories? About 73, 74? Big guy like that. Damn. 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 Johnny Nelson comes one left hook. No! Left hook. What, me hit you? No, no, me. Left no, hook. let me hit you. Let Little me, one. come on. Let me double you up and see the camera go like. Arr. No, no. Come on. You I'll just have to right in the, the camera. Solid. No, I'll catch it. You'll have to pay I'll for catch it when you let fall on it. You, what, let, let me just punch you. No, nah, look, look, you can do my arm. No, I don't want the arm. I want the rib. No! Give me the I'm rib. I'm working out. Move, I'm working out. Get out of there. <laughs> Johnny Nelson, thank you very much for talking to our full TV. Thanks. Catch you soon. First time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.